secretary designate defense government of india all the distinguished excellencies president of the dais ms anu bomma all the invitees here it's my privilege to present here in this event a very good morning to all as we all know over the last decade or so we have seen a great focus on atmanirbharta or what we can call for ease of understanding self reliance in in our country but have we ever pondered as to why there needs to be a focus on self reliance in the first place we have seen the great dividends that it has brought to the country to the economy in terms of uh, growth in terms of jobs in terms of employment creation in multiple sectors but why is it that we need to focus on atmanirbharta or self reliance especially as the theme of the event mentions in emerging technologies so can anyone just mention a few points on this why do we need to focus on self reliance in emerging technologies anyone please we thought i thought we can in, have some interaction from the audience on this key theme of the event so let me just mention a few very strong reasons why we need to focus on uh, self reliance first is that we need to have strategic autonomy in key sectors and especially when we talk about uh, the context of defense it is all the more important because you need to have a strategic control on key areas plus technology especially emerging technology might be the key deciding factor in any future warfare so we need to really understand the overall context in which we need to see the importance of self reliance in emerging technologies in today's world we also have the threat of cyber security data privacy data flows which are all important especially when we talk about emerging technologies so these are the broad reasons as to why focus on self reliance important for a nation like india where in the past we have been dependent in large measures on imports etc for meeting our key requirements now the next point i would like to highlight why self reliance is important and what does it imply for us for our economy first aspect as we have seen the developments in the last decade or so is prioritizing domestic production that's the first consequence or first implication of self reliance in terms of economic growth economic expansion we need to develop secure technology as i mentioned in today's context cyber security data privacy are key factors and perhaps going forward they would become even more critical from the point of view of ensuring that we have a strategic autonomy so we need to focus on developing secure technology hardware software data privacy data flows we also need to put in place a very strong science and technology innovation ecosystem which again has been a key focus area of the government in the last decade where by bringing all the stakeholders onto a common platform through the framework of atmanirbharta we have been able to create an ecosystem where now we can see the outcomes in terms of far greater focus on production within the country in many sectors defense 
exports have gone up and you ju just heard earlier it has gone up by a factor of multiple times so we are seeing the implications of the focus on self reliance in the last uh, few years on our economy on our overall economic growth now what has india done to really promote self reliance in the last decade or so so we have a very robust make in india policy as we all uh, have heard about and we all know which has really helped to put this entire framework of atmanirbharta on a very solid footing by encouraging domestic production developing new technologies we also have focused a lot on made in india and made for the world we should be proud of what we have done in terms of putting in place a very strong suite of digital public infrastructure infrastructure based technologies for example what we have done in digital identity what we have done in digital payments what we have done in terms of putting national digital health mission on uh, 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 under implementation our covin the national vaccine platform these are all great examples of made in india and made for the world and we are now in a position to really have the strategic control and autonomy in these sectors where we have created these world class platforms we also have gone up internationally in terms of our overall innovation capability in 2014 in the global innovation index india was ranked at what number anyone what is the latest ranking what was it in 2014 we were ranked 76 and now in 2023 we have moved up to 40 so it's a huge jump even though we need to cover a lot more distance but still the point is that in the last 10 years through relentless focus on creating a very robust innovation ecosystem our efforts have been recognized internationally and we have really moved up the ladder in terms of our overall innovation capability so we really need to take into account these factors the developments that we have really put in place the achievements that we have made in the last 10 years and build on it in future so that we can focus even more in terms of becoming truly atmanirbhar in key technologies so that brings me to the next point so what is the way forward how do we really ensure that in the coming time we focus on this entire conceptual framework of atmanirbhar even more and bring our economy to even greater heights and compete with the global leaders at the world stage as we all know the world is not borderless all countries they are integrated into the world order at different levels based on their technology and that is going to be a key factor in geopolitics in the coming years as we have all seen the impact in our neighborhood and elsewhere so what is the way forward first is that we need to really put in place an ecosystem which should drive the entire framework the entire concept of atmanirbharta or self reliance and in this context one key requirement is to focus on building a very strong and world class startup and msme ecosystem we already have done so in a great measure in the last few years but we need to grow it even further today we have how many unicorns anyone
Today we have 116 unicorns, out of which more than 100 have come in the last five years. So that shows the growth and the strength that our startup ecosystem today has. This has to be taken further in the years to come. And our startups must become world class in terms of scale, in terms of uh, the technology, in terms of the funding that they receive to become really global leaders. That's a very important aspect going forward when we talk about art Mirvarta or self-reliance. Second is to focus on creating an even more robust science and technology based innovation system by bringing all the stakeholders together. We already have done that in great measure, but that effort, we need to take it further. And the last point that I would like to really mention here, which is very important going forward. We have all heard about whole of government approach in different domains, which is the key factor in the overall growth that we have achieved in the recent times. Going forward, when we talk about Atmir Bharta, we need to bring the whole of nation approach together, not just whole of government. This means that not only the stakeholders within the government or the public sector, but also the private sector, the academia, the civil society groups, they all need to bring their efforts together. They all need to put their thoughts together to really ensure that we can achieve the vision of uh, self-reliance or Atmanavarta. So I would like to conclude uh, my uh, remarks here by again uh, wishing all the very best to the efforts that uh, we have initiated. I am sure the deliberations in this event will bring more insights, more ideas which we can perhaps try to incorporate into our overall efforts to ensure Atman Varta or Silk Land. Thank you.